Okay, so it looks like I'm live, so let's see. Everything should be set up. <laughs> okay, so how do we do that? Okay, good, so let, let's get started then. Um, we see how that goes. That seems to work. All right, so let's start with the first case. Okay. Klinische Angaben, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile. Therapieresistente, sensible, radikuläre Symptomatik, Dermatom L5 links, Punkt, neuer Absatz, Fragestellung, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile, Neurokompression. Fragezeichen, Diskussene, Fragezeichen, L5 links, Fragezeichen, neuer Absatz, Befund, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile. Okay, so. I think the first people are on the stream. This is going to be a reporting session in German, so bear with me. I might not read the chat all the time, um, but but we'll see. Okay, let's go. Okay. Segmentation normal Punkt Alinium Agut Punkt Spinalkanal eng angelegt Osser Punkt Konus Spitze Höhe TH12 Punkt keine Myopathie Punkt kein Hinweis auf eine Neurokompression am Thorakonballen Übergang Punkt Wirbelkörperhemmung um LWK2 Punkt leichte Spondylose Punkt Neurobsatz L1 L2 Doppelpunkt Minimales Discus Bulging Punkt, Verarmen frei Punkt, keine Neurokompression Punkt, Facettengelenke ohne Reizzustand Punkt, neue Zeile L2, L3 Doppelpunkt, keine Diskussenie Punkt, Verarmen frei Punkt, keine Neurokompression Punkt, Facettengelenke ohne Reizzustand Punkt, neue Zeile L3, L4 Doppelpunkt, Bandscheibe leicht entwässert Punkt, diskretes Bulging Punkt, mäßige Facettengelenksarthrosen Ohne relevanten Reizzustand, Punkt, vor allem frei, Punkt, Knochenmarkadem an den Vorderkanten, bei hier deutlicher Spondylose, Punkt. Neue Zeile, L4, L5, Doppelpunkt, keine Diskussernie, Punkt. Vor allem links ausreichend weit, Komma, rechts. Leicht eingehängt, ohne sichere Neuroaffektion. Punkt. Facettengelenke mit mäßiger Arthrose und linksseitig betontem Reizzustand. Punkt. Neue Zeile L5 S1, Doppelpunkt. Keine Diskussionie. Punkt. Vorrahmen frei, Punkt, Facettengelenke ohne Reizzustand, Punkt, neuer Absatz. Retroperitoneale Strukturen, normal, Punkt. Lachterthrose an den ISG, Punkt, neuer Absatz, Beurteilung, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile. So, ja, yeah, um, this is gonna be in German. Let me just see if I can open the chat. I might give you an English summary at the end. Um, so we'll see. Uh, I'm still trying to find out how we can actually do this in the best way. So 
I just reported this uh, case. I'm just trying to find something here in this area. Mm -hmm. So this one looks narrow, but it's actually the wrong side. Here it's good. So just trying to see whether there is a conjoint nerve root. But I don't think. I would go that far and the facet joint osteoarthritis and all the modic changes here. So we just add them. Knochenmarkadium linksseitig in der Deckplatte von L5 bei Modic 1 Osteochondrose. Punkt. Neue Zeile. Gereizte Facettenklangsarthrosen L4, L5 links betont sowie Modic 1 Osteochondrose. L4, L5, Komma, sowie L3, L4, Punkt, neue Zeile, keine Diskussion, Punkt, keine Neurokompression. Tierwurzel L5, links. So I think there is... I'm still not sure whether there is some form of Länger bis Mitternacht. Ja, später. So the reason why I'm slow is because it looks like some of these nerves are having a funny run, but I don't think it matters. Okay, just Leave it like this. Punkt. So now I just need to go over the report. Yeah, I have no influence over this protocol. This is a teleradiology case and they just do what they want. Osser. Konus Spitz. Neurocompression. Okay, just need to fix the stuff here. Maybe I should put on some music. <laughs> Not really sure. Okay. Okay. So now I just need to go over the Yeah, I might actually go through the case maybe in English first and then quickly report it in German so that you guys have a little bit more benefit. That's actually a good idea. Dragon on the shift. Okay. So now let's put this in the race. Text über Text übertragen. Geschlafen. Okay, so now I'm just putting it in the race. Some final edits, and then we can go to the next case. So before I go to the next case, I just make a five minute break. Um, so this is kind of like what we can expect here. I'm gonna do this now for one or two hours, depending on how much stuff I have to do. Okay, so let's send this out. Okay, check. All right. Good. So give me just five minutes. I'll be back in five minutes.
So I'm back. Okay. So okay. So let's go to the next case, and that will be this one. Okay. Okay. So. Okay, that's a double knee and the clinical information. Let me just find it here. It's recurrent knee pain, left side, plica, prior exam. I think the question is whether there is a plica or not. So let's have a look. So we need this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So this so one missing. So these are our ones, and then we take one from the priors, although that's now the old study. And what I'm now going to do is first give you a rundown in English, and then I'll have to report it in German. So we switch things up a little bit. Okay, so this is the prior study. Do I have the prior report? Yes, I do. Okay, let me just read this. Okay, there was surgery before, and this was already here. After you can see the scars, the arthroscopy scar here. So there was arthroscopy already in 2016, and they did a partial resection of Hoffa's fat pad. That's what says it in the prior report. And now patient has a recurring or still persistent knee pain. So let's see. Obviously by doing it uh, this way, I'm gonna be a little bit slower than I usually am, but yeah, bear with me. So we keep this, I like a coronal for comparison. And then let's go, so let's start on the middle side. Okay. So one, one question there, you can use, well, there's not like, uh, I'm not sure whether there's no hanging protocols, but if you press F4, you kind of like can quickly select it. But if I do that, I will reveal the patient's name. So I need to be very careful about how I actually um, do that. So I won't press F4. So that's why I need to do this manually, but bear with me. Okay, so this is a bit risky and I really can't show you any patient information, otherwise I'm kind of like screwed. Okay, so as soon as I see something, I have to just stop everything and shut down and delete and, and don't uh, <laughs> play me for that. Okay, so we have a look. Meniscus is fine, it's nothing wrong. Cartilage fine, no bone edema, medial collateral ligament, a little bit of edema here, but that's not much. Um, you know, just a bit here, we can briefly check on an axial whether we can actually see something there at the origin. But this is not a traumatic case, so I would not make actually anything out of that, so it's just intact. And then we see a bit of signal here on the middle side of things, very subtle. Also here, this is not normal. Um, we don't normally have edema around the semitendinosus tendon. Just a tiny baker says semi membranosus, it's okay. Uh, patient is how old? He's quite young, okay. So we'll not make too much out of it at this point. Um, maybe that's just part of a. It's the same bit, let's see. No, this is the baker cyst, and then there's some additional edema here along the semitendinosus tendon. So that's quite interesting. So, but let's focus on the rest. So cartilage fine, okay, we see the medial synovial fold of the PCL here, re going into the joint, but there's no associated cartilage defect or bone marrow okay, that's fine. So lateral side, then the, that's the prior exam, so <laughs> obviously need to work with the current one. So external meniscus, lateral meniscus, fine, no cartilage defects, no bone marrow edema, publicus tendon, fine. We have lateral collateral ligament is fine. Nothing wrong with the anterolateral ligament. Proximal tibial fibula joint is okay. Iliotibial band, 
just a little bit of signal, but this needs to be clinically correlated. I'm not sure whether that's actually enough, but let's just keep that in mind. And then we go here, cartilage-wise, maybe subtle fraying, nothing much. There's no plica reaching into the joint, no thickening, no edema in the adjacent Hofer fat pad. And then we can see that the Hofer fat pad has these scars from arthroscopy. There was a resection of the tip here. And then we have the extensor tendons, which are fine. Mm. This is normal, but sometimes, you know, depends on the clinic presentation. Sometimes people call it peritendinitis or tendinopathy, but it's a bit thicker. But again, I would not make too much out of it. But the problem is now it doesn't leave us with much. And what did they say in a prior exam? We can just briefly go through here. Uh, let's go to the... You can see this edema here is new. This is the prior study. We don't have this edema around the semitendinosus tendon. And we had less edema here. So if I pull this in next to each other, so this is the prior, this is the new one. It's, it's, it's tough. So it's questionable whether there is a little bit more edema than was here. And then there is certainly more edema down here, but I'm not familiar with edema at that location. So some form of maybe overuse or something. So they didn't come up with any small conclusions. Uh, let's see the Hoffa. Supralateral Hoffa fat pad. They were suspecting something there in the prior study. This is not much. And, oh, actually these were both the old ones. No, this was the old one, so let's go to the new one. Yes, I mean, there's very, it's very subtle there. So technically this can sometimes cause an issue. We don't have patella alta and we don't seem to have any maltracking issue. Okay, so not much. So let me just report this and then we'll go about it. Okay. Klinische Angaben, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile. Rezidivierende Knieschmerzen links, Punkt, neuer Absatz, Status nach MRI 2016, Punkt, neuer Absatz, Blicka, Fragezeichen, neuer Absatz, Befund, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile. Zum Vergleich liegt die Voruntersuchung vom 27.06.2016 vor, Punkt, neuer Absatz, Trägen MRI Knie. Nächste Variable. In a meniscus intact punct. Keine Knoppelschäden punct, kein Knochenmarkadium punct, in a band intact punct, winzige Baker zyste punct, vermehrtes Ödem um die semitendinosus Szene oberhalb des medialen Fimurkondylus mit kleinem Flüssigkeitsstrang bis zur Gracilis Szene auf ihr Gelenkspalt ziehend punct, keine Bursitis. Pes Anserina, Punkt. Nächste Variable. Aus dem Meniskus intakt, Punkt. Keine Knoppelschäden, Punkt. Kein Knochenmarkadem, Punkt. Poplitosene und Außenband, Normal, Punkt. Proximales, Tibia, Fibulargelenk. Normal, Punkt. Tractus illotibialis intakt. Komma zur Voruntersuchung, aber minimal Ödem zwischen Tractus und lateralem Femur Condylus. Punkt. Nächste Variable. VKB und HKB intakt, Punkt. Nächste Variable. Keine Knoppelschäden, Femoropatellär. Kleiner oberflächlicher Knoppelschaden an der Patellaspitze. Komma neu zur Voruntersuchung. Punkt. Minimales Ödem im supralateralen Hofofettkörper. Komma ähnlich zur Voruntersuchung. Punkt. Sonst streckt es intakt. Punkt. Status nach Arthroskopie mit narbigen Veränderungen im Hofa-Fettkörper und abgestumpfter Hofa-Spitze nach partieller Hofa-Resektion, Klammer auf, gemäß klinischen Angaben im Vorbefund. Klammer zu Punkt. Kein Gelenkerguss. Punkt. Neuer Absatzbeurteilung, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile.
neu winziger oberflächlicher Knoppelschaden am Patella first Punkt neue Zeile neu diskretes Ödem zwischen Tractosilla tibialis und lateralem Femurcondylus kommt an dieser Ausprägung häufig asymptomatisch kommt Bedarf einer klinischen Korrelation hinsichtlich einem Tractosilla tibialis Friktionssyndrom Punkt neue Zeile minimales Ödem im supralateralen Hofafettkörper kommt ähnlich zur Voruntersuchung TD supralaterales Hofimpingement Punkt, bedarf ebenfalls einer klinischen Korrelation. Punkt, neue Zeile. Neu, vermehrter Reizzustand, schrägste Flüssigkeit um die Semitendinosussehne und Grazilissehne oberhalb des Kniegelenks, respektive der Kniegelenksebene. Komma. DD mechanisch. Punkt. Okay, so um, yeah, I found some cartilage defects. So in, there's not much going on, a lot of things, um, but only small things. A little bit of edema here, the fluid along here, on the lateral side, a little bit of fluid there, but yeah, generally speaking, not much. Um, so let's see, just need to go through my report. Srashti, intermediate signal change surrounding femoral condyles. Not sure where you saw that, so. This is just uh, cartilage and fluid. I'm not sure ac actually where you mean, to be honest. Um, yeah, okay, so let me just go through the report here briefly and then we can get rid of this. Okay. MRD. In a meniscus. Yeah, I'm just going through the stuff here uh, and fixing my report. There's nothing to see, to be honest. I'll try to, s to check the chat uh, every now and then, but it's actually quite <laughs> challenging multitasking while reporting, so bear with me. Flüssigkeits. Aus dem Meniskus intakt. Aus dem Meniskus intakt. Tractosilla tibialis intakt. Okay, Tractus. Neu. Just put it in kleiner. Das ist supposed to mean. Zu uns und sonst. Sonst streckt es einen intakt. Okay. Okay. Both impingement. Punkt. Wait a second. Come on. Super. Of impingement. Yeah, there we are. The. Vermeer de reiz toest. Irritation. So, okay, that's that. And then here, zack, zack. Text übertragen. Geschlafen. Then just kind of fix my report. Okay, zack, zack, and there you go. Okay, so let me just open the next one, which is this one, and we go back to this scene. There we are. And then clinical information. 
So, click information, not this one, actually, this one. So, injury two months ago, ankle distortion a couple of months ago, actually. Didn't go to the doctor, but now still persistent pain over the distal tibia and fibula with swelling, increased instability, lateral side, and the uh, hind foot, whatever that means. And the question is syndesmosis, bone lesions, ligaments, etc. etc. Okay, so let's load this. So one, two, three. okay, so seven, okay, good. So again, let's go, yeah, so we can already see what's happening. There's a sleeve avulsion here, bone marrow edema, scarring, partial tear of the medial side of the ligaments, but let's just go through everything. But this is a common thing, persistent pain after ankle distortions over a couple of weeks or months. This is where what we need to look for, these stripping avulsion injuries here of the flexor retinaculum and the superficial deltoid ligament. That's just something that keeps on being painful. But let's start with the joints. There is no effusion, maybe a little bit of synovitis, well, a little bit of effusion actually, a little bit of synovitis, a little bit of bone marrow edema in the posterior colliculus here. Fibula is okay, subtail joint, there's no osteoarthritis, a bit of effusion there, tail joint, tiny bone marrow edema doesn't matter. We just leave that out. So the joints are fine. Then let me just open, uh, dictate the clinical information, etc. first. Status nach OSG Subinationstrauma links im Januar 23. Punkt. Damals keine ärztliche Vorstellung erfolgt. Punkt. Mittlerweile immer noch Schmerzen über der distalen Tibia, über dem distalen Schienbein und intermittierende Schwellungsneigung. Punkt. Klinisch vermehrte laterale Aufklappbarkeit des unteren Sprunggelenks. Punkt. Ansonsten stabiler Rückfuß. Punkt. Neue Absatzfragestellung. Doppelpunkt. Neue Zeile. Syndesmose. Fragezeichen. Knöcherne Verletzung. Fragezeichen. Ligamente. Fragezeichen. Sonstiges. Fragezeichen. Neue Absatzbefund. Doppelpunkt. Neue Zeile. Dragon Emery OSG. So, yeah, ligaments, uh, as well, bony wise, it's okay, just the bone edema here, the rest is not super interesting. So, we go now to the syndesmosis, which we can go here. It's a bit, a bit thickened, so we can see it's slightly thicker than usual. There's some scarring, even posteriorly, there's a bit of scarring also here in the interosseous components here. This is more than usual. Uh, it's not normally like this, but we don't see any relevant edema around it. So when we go here, maybe this is even from an older injury. Do we see any evidence of post avulsion? No, it's just some thickening of ligaments. Okay, so sc scarring there, no tear. Then lateral ligaments, whilst we are at this location, we can scroll down and we can see, actually we don't see a nice ATFL, we just see this scarring here where we normally have the ligaments. So this is a history or after complete tear of the ATFL with now this irregular scar forming here, some residual band. Then on this bit here, I would expect to see some similar things. So we can use this maybe, some scarred, thickened ligament, all this scar, perineal tendons going underneath it. So scarring and then PTFL, that's most commonly fine, and we can see the serration still preserved. Okay, so there was a two ligament injury on the lateral side with a lot of scarring now. We can also check whether we have obliteration of the gutter. It's a bit of synovitis here in the gutter, which can predispose to anterolateral ankle impingement together with the scar, but that's something that then needs to be correlated clinically, or we can mention this, but I think the issue is mainly on the middle side. So we then go to the medial side and this is where we can see this old stripping injury here where the medial ligament where basically it's a fascial sleeve avulsion but like it's a subacute to chronic one here you can see the flexor retinaculum then deltoid ligament a lot of scar partially torn here the deep fibers and kind of like mushy in a way partially torn and then a bit of stress reaction here on the posterior colliculus that we saw. And then that's basically that superficial deltoid band, also with some scarring after the stripping injury, not, no surprise there. We don't see a nice ligamentum tibia spring and the tibial calcaneal ligament is kind of like not easy to see some, it's embedded in this big 
scar and then we check the spring ligament so we can see here. Also the flexor retinaculum is quite thick if you look here it's nearly the same thickness as the posterior tubal tendon. Uh, yeah spring ligament looks fine the two other bands here tuck tuck they are good that's not thick and it's not torn okay good and then we go to the tendons I can use this one okay so that's just still acceptable it's fine and then we can go maybe this one just checking the extensor tendons that's okay, and then we go. Posterior tibial tendon has a little bit of tenosynovitis. It reaches all the way up to here, so we have some tenosynovitis of the posterior tibial tendon, but it's otherwise okay. Some tenosynovitis of the perineal tendons too. I don't see a definite split injury. We can use the T1 or the T2 for this. No, retinaculum also good. This is again the score. Okay. Ah, oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, uh, Notware Access. Sounds like you are German, so you probably get more out of this session than the other people. Um, thanks for the super chat or whatever that's called nowadays. Okay, so we can see all that okay excellent so we have got the tendons out of the way now let's move on to the soft tissues and in the soft tissues well we don't well what i look for is basically sinus tarsi there's no edema no synovitis we see the, tr the muscles are fine um, we also want to make sure we are not having any issues with the tarsal tunnel here the nerve no accessory muscles and that's fine so let's basically uh, report is now okay switching switching back to German now next variable geringer ergus im OSG mit leichter Synovitis Punkt machen wir KD mit Colliculus Posterius am Malleolus Medialis Punkt unter das Sprunggelenk intakt Punkt kleine Mittelfußgelenke unauffällig Punkt nächste Variable Norwegian Verdickung der vorderen und hinteren Syndesmose sowie der interosseren Bänder in die Incisura fibularis. Kommen hinweisend auf eine alte stattgehabte Syndesmosenverletzung. Punkt hier in den flüssigkeitssensitiven Sequenzen. Kein Reizzustand. Punkt. Nächste Variable. Deutliche Norwegian Veränderungen am Ligamentum fibulotellare anterius nach stattgehabter Ruptur. Punkt. Deutliche Norwegian Verdickung des Ligamentum fibulocalcaneare nach alter Verletzung. Punkt. Ligamentum fibulotellare posterior soweit noch gut. Punkt. Nächste Variable. Alte Stripping-Verletzung des Flexoretinaculums und des oberflächlichen Deltabandes von Malleolus medialis, welcher leicht irregulär an der Corticalis ist. Klammer auf. Alte Fascial Sleeve Avulsion. Klammer zu. Punkt. Deutliche Vernarbungen des oberflächlichen und tiefen Deltabandes. Punkt. Tiefes Deltaband mit zusätzlicher Partialruptur. Punkt. Flexoretinaculum deutlich narbig verdickt. Auf Höhe des Malleolus medialis und unterhalb davon. Punkt. Springligamentkomplex intakt. Punkt. Next variable. Plantara Poneurose ohne Reizzustand. Punkt Achilles Sehne normal. Punkt Extensor Sehne normal. Punkt Tibialis Posterior Sehne mit leichter Tenosynovitis. Punkt Übrige Flexor Sehne intakt. Punkt Peroneal Sehne mit Tenosynovitis inframalleolär. Komma ohne Nachweis einer Splitläsion. Punkt Superiores Peroneales Retinaculum intakt. Punkt. Norbige Veränderungen am Extensor Retinaculum, an der fibulären Insertion des inferioren Extensor Retinaculums, kann man hinweisen auf eine alte stattgehabte Rupturpunkt. Nächste Variable. Trophik der Muskulatur gut, Punkt, Sinustarsi und Tarsaltunnel unauffällig, Punkt. 
neuer Absatzbeurteilung, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile. Reizzustand am Malelus Medialis mit Knochenmarkodem und subakuter periostalem Stripping, subakuter periostalem Stripping des Fascial Sleeve mit Norweger Verdickung des Flexoretinaculums, Norwegen Veränderung des Deltabands mit Partialruptur der tiefen Anteile. Punkt, neue Zeile, deutliche norwege Veränderungen am ATFL und LFC nach lateraler Zweibandläsion. Punkt, neue Zeile, geringer Tenosynovitis, tertibialis posterior Sehne. Punkt, neue Zeile, geringer Erguss im OSG mit leichter Synovitis, komma auch im anterolateralen Gatter des OSG. Punkt. Okay, so that was uh, the report, so let's go now and fix fix the issues and for this we're gonna just keep that screen on I guess I guess it's fine so let's see voice game it left okay kleine mittelfußgelenke yes Okay. Okay, so we take a shift this. Flexor retinal columns on flexor. Ah. Can make it one word. Welcher, welcher leicht an der Corticalis ist alte Fascial Sleeve. Okay, das ist Fascial Sleeve, Avulsion. It's technically not an avulsion, it's actually a stripping injury. Tiefes Delta Band mit Tiefes Delta Band Springligament komplex in okay. Teil. Okay. So we train this. Springligament komplex intakt. Punkt. Now the reason why I have to train the voice recognition is because I just started with a new vocabulary after installing a new PC and I didn't import my old vocabulary which was not very well treated by me um, so I'm trying to do this now a little bit better but I will also try the Dragon 1 in a couple of weeks okay. Flexors in an intact yes Yeah, I didn't mention this when I went through the case, but there's actually also injury to the retinaculum, inferior extensor retinaculum here. There's a lot of scarring, which is not ATFL and it's not syndesmosis. This is the inferior extensor retinaculum, the fibular insertion, actually. Okay. Subacutum perioste fascial sleeve. Fascial sleeve. Flexor retinal columns. Norwegian Veränderung des. Lateraler Zweibandläsion. Maybe we can do this. Always came with lachtes. Okay. Neue Zeile, Dragon Unterschrift, Text übertragen. Damit. Dr 
Aufträge unter Shift. Klinische Angaben, Doppelpunkt. Just a, give me just a sec here. Silly old program. Um, <laughs> okay, so I'm just keeping it here. I'm just gonna fix this and put it in. Okay. Text übertragen. So I will just fix up this report and then we can go to the next case, actually. So this one. It's not ideal that I have to do this, but it's part of the game. Okay, so check. All right, so these are all done now. Um, let's see, what do we have in chat? Yeah, so thanks again, Nordware Access, for the super chat. 20 euros, that's very kind of you. and. Patella first, yeah, that I think it's a good term to describe this in the middle, or I think in English you could use patellar rich. So, okay, so let's go to the next. So we don't need this anymore. We can go here. I don't need this. We get rid of this and we open this and I have to log in. Okay, now let's go to the next hospital or client. As you know, I work for different clients and I have to switch back and forth between them. Um, so let's see, okay. And then I go back here. I'm now taking this over, that's the stream, streaming software. Doesn't have to bother you, okay, there you go and chat is there that's great okay so the next case will be a wrist MRI let's go back just make sure I don't show anything so this is the MRI this is an arthrogram I can't show you the actual arthrography because they have the patient name on it and <coughs> the packs can't Automatically, automatically anomaze it. And that terror writes that he loves that type of content. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, it's kind of like a, you know, I'm trying to find out how I can do this in a engaging way um, because reporting in German and if you're not speaking German, it's kind of like, yeah, not so great. But we'll see how we can go about this. Okay, anyway, so let's chat. Let's, uh, you can see me. Yeah, you can see. Okay, so let's start with this one. Um, just okay so there was a fall a couple of weeks ago persistent pain uh, with radiation up to the lower arm and the question is fracture ligament injury and this is the MRI so let's have a look at this MRI so just skimming through and uh, if you I have my book, you kind of like know why I want to do this, just get a quick overview of what we can see. And then we just open the template, drag and every handgelenk. This gives us the framework how we go for the case. So let's start with the distal radio ulnar joint. We can see here orientation is fine, position is fine. This is the arthrography, that's why we, there's a little bit of a edema or leakage here. I would not make much out of that per se. So there's no cartilage defects, no fracture. Um, this could just be based on the injection. This one is a bit more questionable. Normally the arthrography doesn't really go into this area here, but maybe if they inject too much, then we have some leakage here. Um, I'm just thinking out loud, so this is not what actually goes into the report. But uh, there's not much in terms of the joint itself that's wrong. But let's now focus on the TFCC. And for the TFCC, we can see there's a bit of a funny change here, and uh, but let's go through this systematically. So we have the disc proper, which also shows here kind of like a signal change. So if you think about the meniscus, we would call it a tear. And then we have the dorsal and the volar radio ulnar ligaments, which show some mild signal changes. But I think, how old is the patient actually? 
yeah, he's 45 or 50, something in that range at least. Okay, so, and a couple of weeks ago there was an injury. Okay, do we know where the pain is? We don't, okay. Yeah, that's not helpful. Okay, so this is the PD, and then we have a T1. Well, we don't have a T1. They only do this sagittal as a T1. So we can maybe use this to get some more information, or we can use, I'm not sure if the caliper actually works. So it works, so we can see this is back here, so it's quite far posteriorly. And whenever you have things there, but they wouldn't inject here, they inject here. And the undersurface here looks a bit irregular. The stuloid is here, and we can see this is part of the stuloid process that goes over here. So we want to check this also on the axis, and we can see the stuloid process goes in here. This is where we have a little bit of edema, and then this is where they inject it here, so it's close by. Um, I think it's a bit too irregular here. This is the dorsal bit, so this is dorsal side, and there looks like there is an articular sided tear where we have fluid going in. There's no communication, the proper disc here is fine. This is kind of like a horizontal a tear. I would probably think of it as not really a tear, maybe it's something old because the contrast is not going in, but it's not normal to have these linear changes here, but this is uh, abnormal. And in terms of the foveal, attachment, some of it will be this one here, but it seems to go, the contrast, I mean, between the two, it's it's kind of a shame that the orientation of the steroid process is a bit funny uh, here. The steroid attachment is still there, the foveal attachment looks, it's torn, so that's what we will go for here, um, or at least for the moment. Okay, so that's for the TFCC. Then we go to the radiocarpal compartment here. We basically want to rule out cartilage defects. We can check whether contrast actually went through the joints. Um, since they don't do a coronal T1 specifically, well, we don't see any fusion, but it doesn't look like there's actually contrast in the radiocarpal compartment. So that's good. And then we can check for the midcarpal bones. There is no edema, no fracture, especially scaphoid. And the other bits we want to check is trapezial ridge and hamulus osi samati. Okay, that's that's good. And then, okay, that's that. And then we go back, and then we go to the mid-carpal compartment, second facet of the lunate, no cartilage defects, no effusion, no osteoarthritis. Uh, well, effusion we can't tell, but nothing that picks my eye. And then we go to the ligaments, and we would start with the SL ligament, so we can go here. SL ligament has some intrinsic, well, the signal is a bit too high. Uh, here we can't necessarily see it nicely, even the Waller one looks like we don't see a proper ligament here. Uh, let's see, but it didn't go through the contrast, I mean, so let's see if we can see a bit more here, we can see this signal change, this one are fine, this top one, and then when we go down we start to see some high signal, and this is what we also see here, where we have this band still going through. Then we go down where we have some higher signal changes, here is questionable, uh, so there could be actually at least a partial tear, and then also here I would only go with partial tear because we don't have any obvious contrast communication, otherwise we would have this. So let me just do something, I'm gonna show you only this image and then I will quickly peek. I hope this works how the arthrography looked like but okay and then we go back. So um, yeah you can see there's no contrast going through although they might not have moved it properly but it is now a widening so for the sake of this interpretation, I don't think there was contrast communication to the radiocarpal compartment. Here we can see this contrast pooling in this area, some leakage down here. So this indicates that there is now contrast within the ligamentum sucrentum, where we have this foveal, uh, this partial tear or the tear of this foveal attachment, or at least partial tear there, where contrast goes in this area where it shouldn't. So let me go back, uh, because you know, this, and then we get this in and we can go back live. Yeah, so I'm getting slowly the hang out of this. 
All right. Yes, so ligament-wise, um, we have to think about the partial tear of the SL ligament, or maybe just some, maybe even all the like degeneration or something like that, because no contrast is going through. Then dorsal radiocarpal and dorsal intercarpal ligaments are fine. The wall extrinsic ones are fine. We don't see much there. And then we go to the tendons, and here we quickly go easy tendon with some tendinosis. Um, but no tenosinovitis, no tears, and then we see the other extensor tendons here are good. When we go to the flexor tendons, there's not much happening either, carpal tunnel is fine, and then in terms of the muscles, the muscles look okay, no atrophy, no edema, just a bit here. But I guess it's just still okay, I don't think this is from a couple of weeks old injury, I think this is just a leakage. Um, and uh, that's what I would go for. So, okay, so I think I got a good idea. So let's report this. Next variable. Can I knopple shedden punkt? Can I knopple markedem punkt? Leichte contrast mit lextravasation. Proximal an der kapsel. Komma sehe auch arthrophie bilder punkt. Next variable. Discus triangularis mit linearer Signalerhöhung in die Unterfläche einstrahlend. Punkt im dorsalen Anteil. Kontrastmitteleintritt in die Unterfläche mit mindestens Partialruptur der fovialen Insertion. Mit Kontrastmitteleintritt bis ins Ligamentum subcurrentum. Punkt die styloidale Insertion ist intakt. Punkt kein Kontrastmittelübertritt nach Radiokarpal. Punkt geringe Degenerationen am An der radialen Insertion des dorsalen radiolnaren Ligaments, Punkt, das volare radiolnare Ligament ist intakt. Punkt. Nächste Variable. Kein Kontrastmittelübertritt nach Radiokorpal, Punkt, keine Knoppelschäden, Punkt, Radius intakt. Punkt. Hm. Nächste Variable. Lunatum Typ 2 Facette. Punkt. Keine mitkarpale Degenerationen. Punkt. Keine Frakturen. Punkt. Kein Knochenmarködem. Punkt. Nächste Variable. Signaltrationen am Dorsalen und auch volaren SL-Band. Am Übergang dorsales SL-Band zur membranösen Portion. Verdacht auf Partialruptur. TD Subacupis chronisch. Punkt, LT-Band intakt, Punkt, dorsale extrinsische Ligament intakt, Punkt. Volare extrinsische Ligament intakt, Punkt. Nächste Variable. Extensorsehnen und Flexorsehnen intakt, Punkt. Keine Tenosinovitis, Punkt. Nächste Variable. Unauffällig, Punkt. Nächste Variable. Muskulatur gut, Punkt, kein Muskulatem, Punkt. Kleines radiovolares Handgelenksgang, Leonan typische Lokalisation ohne klinische Bedeutung, Punkt, neue Absatzbeurteilung, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile. Kleiner Unterflächeneinriss am Discus triangularis mit Partialruptur der fovialen Insertion des TFC C TFC C Punkt neue Zeile Signalalteration Signalalterationen am dorsalen und weniger volaren SL Band hinweisend auf eine Partialruptur, vor allem am Übergang dorsales zum membranösen Anteil. 
Punkt. Neue Zeile. Well, I guess that's it. So we can now go here. Just need to fix the report. I can show you here the report. Can make it a bit bigger for you guys in case you speak German. Okay. Mindestens partial ruptur de. Mindestens partial ruptur de. Subcurrentum punct di. Punct. Punct. Radius intact punct. Radius intact punct. Typ 2 facette punct. Membranlösen Portion. Verdacht auf. Zur Membranlösen Portion. Let's see. So slow, okay. Sometimes dragon is just slow. TD Subacup is chronic. TD Subacup is. Okay. And typical localization on it. Okay, so let's let's go here and put it in. Text übertragen. And then for this client I have to change the font, the size, lots of different things. Okay. All right, so it's gonna take me a little bit longer than normally, but I think it's okay. I think, or at least I hope you guys like this because otherwise <laughs> I, I stop. Um, this is simple. Okay. Okay, that's good. All right, tack, we don't need this. And then we just hit send. Okay, let's go to the next one. So let me just go and briefly do this. And I see there's not much happening in the chat. So if you have any questions, I'm reading chat too. Um, it's not, sometimes I just can't respond quite quickly. So just bear that in mind. Okay, now this patient, it's gonna be a shoulder and how can I do that? We go here and it's this one. And we got this. Okay, excellent. So we go back here. This is the case shoulder MRI, arthrogram, and the clinical information that I got here was. A 
History after severe shoulder pain. Klinische Angaben, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile, Status nach erheblichen Schulterschmerzen, Punkt, neue Absatz, Fragestellung, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile, Status, Fragezeichen, neuer Absatzbefund, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile. Trägen Emery, Schulter, Zellerat. So, I'm just gonna... Okay. Nächste Variable, rechten. Nächste Variable, rechts. Nächste Variable. Okay, so, template ready. Now let's see, um, this was an arthrogram, let's just come through, T1, there's a pain marker, I believe, or is this just some leakage of, or oh, just some continuous lesion, that's for just a marker there, and yeah, I mean, we can see a couple of things, okay, good. Um, yeah, let, let's briefly go through AC joint, osteoarthritis not, doesn't matter. This is not the same signal intensity, so we have bursitis. You can see there's no contrast in there, but it's fluid, so we have extensive supracromial bursitis. Even all of that bit here in the anterior ports, you can see all this fluid here is no contrast, so there's no communication, so we have extensive bursitis. Um, and that's that, so we don't expect like too much stuff happening with the tendon, rotator cuff tendon. And then we can hear some yeah, edema here, some very subtle things, but not much. Subscap, fine. Biceps tendon shows some tendinosis. Maybe here, tiny split hair at its origin. And then the interval otherwise is fine. Pulley, I would think, is still okay. And then the muscles, axillary soft tissues, and then the cartilage. We can use this one for cartilage. It's fine. Then we have kind of widening here, some irregularities. So this is maybe more than just normal stuff, but patient is also older. Um, so I'm not overcalling slap tears, especially not in this age. And then we have that. So basically the main thing will be the bursitis. So let's start reporting. Messiger Ziegelengslatrose mit geringem Reizzustand, Punkt, neue Zeile, ausgeprägte Bursitis, subacromialis, schärfte Subdeltida mit großem Flüssigkeitskischen. Flüssigkeitskissen, vor allem anterior über dem Humerus Kopfpunkt, kein Kontrastmittel übertritt vom Gelenk in die Bursa subacromialis schrägstrich subtaltidia. Punkt. Nächste Variable. Supraspinatus Sehne durchgängig. And so something we can see here with the tendon here, this has kind of like a funny, funny way of coming out. So and then some higher signal essentially, and some of these fibers sometimes they can also show interstitial tears. Or it could also be an, a ganglion cyst within the tendon substance. So we can see it's kind of like has a funny shape here. And I think, well, we don't know really about the bursal sided tear because of the contrast not being on the right spot, but something is pushing these two fibers out. This is not normal. And I tend to believe that there is maybe some form of a inter substance partial tear here, while the articular fibers are fine. And the bursal sided fibers also di don't give us too much information. I don't obviously see some obvious fraying, and I don't see a obvious partial tear on the bursal side. Okay, so how do we say this? Unter dem Acromion leichte Irregularitäten in der Sehnensubstanz am myotendinösen Übergang mit teils kleinen Kaliberirregularitäten der Zentrale. Der zentralen Sehnen Zügel, DD, interstitielle Faserruptur, hier aber kein Kontrastmittel durchtritt und auch keine offensichtliche Verbindung in die bursaseitige Oberfläche der Sehne. Klammer auf, siehe Dokuserie. So, I just need to make a Dokuserie. Um. Oh. Okay. I just need to do this. 
and then we can go back once it's saved. So takes a while. There we go. And we're back. Okay. Good. Good, good. Okay, so Doku Siri Klammer zu Punkt. In Verspinatus Sene intakt Punkt, Teres Minor Sene intakt Punkt, Subscapularis Sene am Oberrand mit leichten Ausfaserungen, Komma ohne Ruptur Punkt. Nächste Variable. Muskelqualität allseits gut allier, römisch 2. Punkt. Kein Muskel. Geringes Ödem im Musculus supraspinatus, myofascial bis an die irreguläre zentrale Sehnenplatte unter dem Akromion. Komm mal hinweisend auf einen interstitiellen Riss. Punkt. Die übrige Muskulatur ist unauffällig. Punkt. Axilläre Weichteile normal. Punkt. Nächste Variable. Fettgewebe im Rotatorenintervall Normalpunkt, leichte Tendinopathie der langen Bizepssehne mit kleinem Längssplit am Bizepssehnenanker. Punkt. Lange Bizepssehne. Sonst im Sulcus intertubercularis zentriert. Punkt. Nächste Variable. I was just looking if the chat is actually still working. Okay, never mind. Keine fokalen Knorpelschäden, Punkt, kein subkontrales Knochenmark für den Punkt, leicht erweiterter supralabraler Rezessus mit leichten Labrum-Irregularitäten supraposterior, bei Labrum-Degeneration, Punkt, Osteophytenbildung am vorderen Acetablumrand, Punkt. Gute Distension des axillären Gelenkrezessus ohne Kapselverdickung, Punkt, Neuabsatzbeurteilung, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile, deutliche Bursitis, Subacromialis, Schergschach, Subdeltilia, Punkt, neue Zeile. Verdacht auf interstitielle Superspinatussehnenruptur am myotendinösen Übergang mit myotendinösem und myofaszialem Muskelödem. Punkt, die Ruptur zeigt keine Verbindung in die bursaseitige oder gelenkseitige Sehnenoberfläche. Komma, siehe Dokuserie, Punkt. Neue Zeile, Tendinopathie der langen Bizepssehne mit kleiner Splitläsion am Bizepssehnenanker und Labrumdegeneration, Punkt. Okay, that's it. I would not make more out of that. Let's go here. So we don't know how long the symptoms are, but it doesn't really matter too much. Okay. 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 Yeah, Leon, no worries. I'm glad you like it. And I was thinking if I stream, I can actually work and uh, create content at the same time. So it's kind of like, um, I think a good idea actually. Okay. In the Übergang mit teils kleine kleine Okay. Interstitiellen Riss. Okay. I'm wondering, how is the image quality on your end? Because I'm not sure how this looks like actually on YouTube. I should probably watch the recording afterwards myself. Um, so if you have any technical issues, like if you don't hear me or something, just let me know. I 
Das ist super posterior. Und Degeneration. Punkt. Oh ja, das ist ein Mistake, ja, yes, just saw it. Uh, oh. Klenoidrand. Punkt. Oh. Gute Distension. Okay. Verdacht auf interstitielle Verdacht auf interstitielle Eine split -Läsion. Okay. Eine split -Läsion. Labrum Degeneration. Punkt. Labrum Degeneration. Punkt. Okay. That's it. Text übertragen. All right. So, yes, thanks for the Feedback, not with access, I just realized that there was the acetabulum rather than the glenoid in my report. Um, so we don't want to do that, obviously. And it's especially important working in a teleradiology setup for other radiologists. You really don't want to make mistakes and double check things because they scrutinize you more than if you work or are just employed in an institution. This is just a different game. That's just how it is. Okay. Okay. And then these ones, tack, tack. So I'm now working on my second screen, so tack, okay. Okay. All right, and off you go. So next one, and I should just be able to pick it here, okay. Um, yeah, so this is just the next shoulder here, and we can see this time the image quality is a bit less good. Uh, this is actually a one Tesla scanner now, but it doesn't have to bother us. So there was an injury a couple of months ago, painful now, and they suspect the supraspinatus tendon issue. Okay. Trigonometry shoulder telerat. Okay, so yeah, we can already see the supraspinatus is completely torn, AC joint, fine, supraspinatus gone, and intraspinatus still coming in here, subscapularis tendon also torn and only just a tiny bit is inserting and then biceps tendon still goes down but medially sublux, biceps fully torn and we have no cartilage defects, no bone edema, joint capsule, a little bit of synovitis but no evidence of any frozen shoulder or anything like that. And then a bit of atrophy here, a bit of atrophy there and severe atrophy of the subscapularis which is near total or co near complete avulsed. Okay, so that's basically the case already. So let's bring this now down to some smart words. Rechts. Next variable. Messiger Ziegelungsartrose ohne Reizzustand. Punkt. Kontrastmittelübertritt bis in die subacromiale Bursa und das Acromion. Punkt. Breiter Knochenstempel an der Acromion Unterfläche mit spitzen Rändern. Punkt. Synoviale Proliferationen in der Bursa subacromialis, Chiacra subdeltidia, Komma hinweisen auf eine Bursitis. Punkt. Nächste Variable. Komplette transmorale Ruptur der gesamten supraspinatus Sehne mit Retraktion des stehenden Sehnenstumms bis knapp Höhe glenohumeraler Gelenkspalt, Klammer auf Patherömisch 2, Klammer zu. Punkt. Bridging sign zur ebenfalls hochgradig rupturierten Subscapularis-Szene. 
Komma, welche praktisch komplett abgerissen ist mit nur noch einem dünnen, insiebenden Anteil am Unterrand des Tuberkulum minus, Klammer auf. Lafos Typ Römisch 3 bis Römisch 4, Klammer zu, Punkt. Infraspinatus Sehne, distal leicht tendinopathisch, Komma sonst aber durchgängig, Punkt. Teres Minor Sehne intakt, Punkt. Nächste Variable. Atrophie des Musculus Supraspinatus, Klammer auf Gutelli Römisch 2, Klammer zu, Punkt. Deutliche Atrophie des Musculus Subscapularis, Gutelli Römisch 4, Punkt. Die übrige Muskulatur ist leicht verfettet. Klammer auf Gutelli Römisch 2. Punkt. Kein Muskelödem. Punkt. Axilläre Weichteile normal. Punkt. Nächste Variable. Fettgewebe im Rotatorenintervall. Normal. Punkt. Lange Bizepssehne. Medial subluxiert mit Polyruptur. Rupturiertem Pulli. Punkt. Bizepssehne, teils leicht tendinopathisch. Nach Eintritt in den Sulcus intertuberkularis. Punkt. Nächste Variable. Keine fokalen Knorpelschäden. Punkt. Kein subchondrales Knochenmark. Punkt. Leichte Synovitis im axillären Gelenkrezessus, welcher aber gut distendiert ist, ohne Kapselverdickung. Punkt. Labrum degeneriert. Punkt. Neuer Absatz. Beurteilung, Doppelpunkt, neue Zelle, komplette Ruptur der Supraspinatussehne mit Retraktion des Sehnenstumms bis Glenohumeral der Gelenkspaltklammer auf Patherömisch 2, Klammer zu. Komma, gute Lehrömisch 2. Punkt, neue Zeile, subtotale, subskapulare Sehnenruptur, Klammer auf Lafos, Römisch 3 bis Römisch 4 mit schwerer Klammer zu. Verfettung, Klammer auf, gute Lehre, Römisch 4, Klammer zu, Punkt. Mit positiven Tangentenzeichen. Neue Zeile, leichter Synovitis, kleiner Humoral und Bursitis, Subacromialis, Chakra Subdeltidia, Punkt. Neue Zeile, leicht nach medial subluxierte lange Bizepssehne mit Polyruptur und Tendinopathie, Punkt. Okay, so the bridging sign is, I can show you, bridging sign. I made a video about this a couple of weeks ago. So the bridging sign is technically if you have a tear of the supraspinatus and it has a connection with the also torn subscapularis tendon. So you can see if you follow the top slip of the torn subscap, it goes to the supraspinatus tendon. So if They build a sling together, they are both retracted together and they are both stuck together here at the base of the coracoid process. So you can th think of this like you have these two tendons connected through the coracohumeral cor ligament, etc. And if they both are torn and are retracted, if they have a connection, they can't retract more than the base of the coracoid process because they get stuck here and they form this bridging sign, so it's called a uh, bridging sign, um, maybe shoulder, if you, it's a bridging sign, yeah, how do I, I'm gonna share the link mm. with you guys in chat, there you go, you can watch this video, okay, so that's that, and then we have that, now let's fix the report. Supercomniale Pursa. Das Akromion Punkt. Unter das. Unter das. 
breiter Knochenstempel an. So, okay, we could technically measure this in centimeters, but I think we just used the classification I described here, doesn't matter. Oh shit. <laughs> I should not curse on stream. Um, no. Knapp Höhe, kleiner Humeraler, kleiner Humeraler Gelenkspalt. Okay. Bridging sign, sign so zu ebenfalls. Yes, bridging sign zu ebenfalls. So. Distal leicht tendinopathisch. Okay. Tendinopathisch, also ein Tag, der ist minor. So if you have an idea how I can make these pauses more interesting, maybe I should ask a question or a quiz or anything like that to keep it more engaging actually. So I'm just brainstorming. Rupturiertem Pulli. Or we do a combined stream. I need a host. Kleiner Humeraler Gelenkspalt, Kamera auf. So, we just give this atrophy. Pulley Ruptur und uh, Dragon Pulley Ruptur. Okay. Text übertragen. Geschlafen. Okay. okay, come on, zack. Okay, then this. this. Okay, okay. And zack, okay. Yeah, I guess. I should probably make, maybe just do a German stream, to be honest, and then I can just work through like I normally would, rather than going through the case in English first. Um, yeah, maybe we should split this up. It's actually one thing. I'll, I don't report in English at the moment, so that's quite a shame, though. So let's go to the next case. Four left, and we can use. Just switching the stream, uh, the screen here, just a sec. Don't want to show too much. Okay, I'll be right with the wrist MRI. Um. Fraktur, Fragezeichen, Kapselverletzung, Fragezeichen, Sehnenverletzung, Fragezeichen, Hämatom, Fragezeichen, Muskelriss, Fragezeichen, Neuropsatz, Befund, Doppelpunkt, Neuzahle. Okay, so for this case I didn't get much information. Um, so we just open this and uh, let's see. Yeah, just pain, no autogram, just a standard native wrist MRI. Okay, Dragon Emery Handkelenk. So again, we do the same thing. So we start down here. And I think based on the question, I expect there was a trauma and we have a pain marker here. So this radial nerve joint is fine. TFCC looks fine. And this time we have no obviously like changes in the disc and the foveal and the attachment are fine, radiocarpal joint rate is fine, scaphoid fine, second lunate facet, maybe some cartilage thinning here but no osteoarthritis, so likely un not relevant, no osteoarthritis mid carpal joint, then ligament, we can see there's a bit of a high signal at the SL ligament, this is where we have the marker, keep that in mind, LT ligament, 
it's mildly increased. This one is fine. So maybe there's like a sprain of this SL ligament. Should there have been a trauma? We can also verify this on the coronal. Um, oh yeah, you don't see it. That's uh, thanks for letting me know. Um, yeah, that's you didn't miss anything up to this point actually. Uh, everything was okay. I was just looking at the SL ligament where we can see a little bit of a higher signal here in the SL ligament as opposed to the LT ligament, which we can also see here. You can see it's a bit high, so I think something like a subacute sprain because we don't see any soft tissue edema, but the history would obviously need to give us more information here. The water portion here is fine, LT ligament, I guess it's okay. Just maybe here some signal changes and the patient is quite young, so that's why I think it's a post-traumatic situation and not just degeneration. What I don't see is a ganglion is coming out here, um, and then we can check the extrinsic ligament, so the dorsal radiocarpal ligament, dorsal intercarpal ligament, I think they're both fine, and the volar one, the volar extrinsic ligaments are fine too. So we can go straight to the tendons and ECU tendon mildly subluxed, which can be normal. Maybe there's a bit of edema around it, but then again, we don't see much uh, in terms of, oh, thank you, not for excess for another 10. That's really not necessary, but thank you very much. Um, you can see sublux is normal, can happen often, but there's also some edema around it, so we keep that in mind. No tenosynovitis, though. The other extensor tendons are okay, so that's all right. And then the flexor tendons are fine, too. All right, that's okay. In turn, soft tissue. Carpal tunnel, fine. No soft tissue, edema, muscle, fine. Okay, so let's report this. Next variable. Unauffällig, comma, angedeutet, leichte ulna minus varianz punkt. Korrelation mit Röntgenbild empfohlen, punkt. Next variable. Discus triangularis intact, punkt, dorsales und volaris radiolnares ligament intact, punkt, foveale und styloidale insertion intact, punkt. Nächste Variable. Radius intact, punkt, keine Knoppelschäden, punkt, keiner Guss, punkt. Nächste Variable. Ra Nächste Variable. Nächste Variable. Lunatum Typ 2 Facette ohne sekundäre Arthrose, Punkt, sonst mit Karpal Normal, Punkt, keine Fraktur, Punkt. Nächste Variable. Leichte homogene Signalerhöhung am dorsalen SL-Band, Punkt, der volare und membranöse Anteil erscheinen intakt, Punkt, LT-Band intakt, Punkt, extrinsische Handgelenksligamente intakt, Punkt. Nächste Variable. Ezeosene leicht subluxiert mit perifokal leichtem Weichtelödem und leichten zentralen Signalalterationen, die die leichte Tendinose. Die, die dynamische Ezeosenen Instabilität. Punkt. Nächste Variable. Unauffällig. Punkt. Nächste Variable. Unauffällig. Punkt. Insbesondere kein dorsales Handgelenksgang und Punkt. Neue Absatzbeurteilung. Doppelpunkt. Neue Zeile. Signal alteriert das dorsales SL-Band, passend zu einem subakuten. TD subakute Zerrung. Punkt. Okay, I just see that the trauma was a couple of weeks ago. So there was actually a trauma, so which makes sense that this is a subacute sprain. Komma passend zu einer subakuten Zerrung. Punkt. Neue Zeile, keine Fraktur. Punkt. Sehnen intakt. Punkt. Kein Hämatom. Punkt. Muskulatur unauffällig. Punkt. So that's basically it. And Typ two facette ohne
leicht subluxierte ECU-Szene bei allerdings supinierter Handgelenksposition im Scanner, Komma, kann auch bei asymptomatischen Personen gesehen werden, Punkt, durch das perifokale Weichtelodem hier, aber muss auch an die Möglichkeit an einer mechanischen Reizung oder Ethiosinen Instabilität gedacht werden, Punkt, klinische Korrelation nötig, Punkt. I don't think we can actually see or rule out or rule in a subsheath injury. So let's put this in and just... mit oder ohne Verletzung der Subscheide. Okay, so that's it. Um, okay. Signal alteriert das Dorsales. Leicht subluxiert ist das bei allerdings supinierter Handgelenksposition. Okay. Supinierter Hand kann auch bei all Oh, that's not right. Come on. Dragon, Dragon, you're so slow. Kann auch bei all Asymptomatischen. Asymptomatischen. <coughs> All right. Okay. Good. So let's pull it over. Text übertragen. I think, yeah, okay. So that was an interesting case. Okay. So I'm just gonna write the report and or just copy it over making the necessary formatations, which is a shame. I'd rather go even quicker, but part of the game. Okay, there you go. Okay, I think that's fine. Nice sprain, SL ligament sprain and some ECU issue, issue. Okay, good. Then we can go to the next case. Again, another wrist. And we can open the case. There we go. And we have another wrist and we can put this away. I don't think we need this. Let's see what it, this is all about. Um, Oh, that's not the uh, information I need. I need this one. Oh no, also not that one. Not that one. Oh. Um, yes, that's the one. Klinische Angaben, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile, Avulsionsfraktur vom Ostrapezium, Fragezeichen, neuer Absatz. Trauma am 26.06.23. Kontusion der Hand auf die Kante. Eine Kante, Punkt. Fragestellung, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile, Avulsionsfraktur am Ostrapezium, Fragezeichen, Neuraufsatzbefund, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile. So, essentially, patient was throwing something and just hit, hit his wrist. And this is the sister right there more. Yeah, I think it is. And when we think ab about the previous case, you can now see how the SL ligament looks nice, right? So remember the other one. Um, let me go here. Abnormal SL ligament and 
normal aesthetic event here. Okay, never mind. So let's briefly go to the case. Um, so this color is not joined. GFCC, fine, not much. So small ganglances, the radiocarpal, tiny second facet. We have to check the track vitrum uh, on somewhere else. And, but they want to know the trapezium. So I'm not sure why they think there should be a fracture. And well, trapezium can have issues at the trapezial ridge, so we're going to check this on the axials. But I don't see much here. We're going to axial, we can go here. Trapezial ridge, this is a side where we sometimes have fractures. There's the pain marker, although the trapezial ridge is over here. So it's completely not the right location. Deep ulnar nerve going up here. It's a deep ulnar nerve. Ulnar nerve armed. Okay. I don't see much. Yeah, so I don't see much on the first run through Pisa Traquitral. These are just, I think these are veins. So there are a couple of veins and arteries. So the question is would there even be some form of aneurysm? Or is it just some form of coiling of the vessel here? Hmm. I think it's just one spiral-like course of the artery, like choo -choo -choo -choo. there, choo -choo -choo. still open. I don't see an aneurysm. I don't see occlusion, but this is where the pain is. So maybe they should do ultrasound, or maybe we do a contrast study. Um, yeah, but we'll see. So let's go through the case in a systematic approach. Dragon MD handgelenk, next to Variable. Unauffällig Punkt, next to Variable. Unauffällig Punkt, next to Variable. Unauffällig Punkt, next to Variable. Karpales Gefüge erhalten, Punkt, keine Fraktur, Punkt, Trapezium intakt, Punkt. Somehow the piezotratical articulation is a bit off. But I don't see a lot of edema. Piezohamate ligament. But then again, there's no bone or edema or anything, but maybe just describe it. Leichte Inkongruenz im pisotriquetralen Gelenk ohne Reizzustand oder Erguss im pisotriquetralen Rezessuspunkt Ligamentum pisohamatum intakt. Punkt. Keine Auffälligkeiten. Nächste Variable. SL Ligament und LT Ligament intakt. Punkt. Dorsale und volare extrinsische Handgelenksligamente intakt. Punkt. Nächste Variable. Strecksehnen und Flexorsehnen intakt. Punkt. ECU-Sehne luxiert nach lateral ohne perifokalen Reizzustand bei gering supernierter Untersuchungsposition. Punkt. Keine Tenosynovitis. Punkt. Nächste Variable. Unauffällig Punkt. Nächste Variable. Muskulatur intakt, Komatrophik der Muskulatur gut, ohne Hinweis auf eine Muskelzerrung. Punkt. Die Arteria ulnaris zeigt distal des Flexoretinaculums in der Hohlhand einen gekeulten Verlauf. Komma hier etwas Schmerzmarkierung. Punkt. Gegebenenfalls. Gefäßultraschall empfohlen. Punkt. Nächste Variable. Oh. Uh, that was already soft tissue. There we go. Damn it. Okay. Good. Okay. So. 
Beurteilung, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile. Keine Fraktur, Punkt, Trapezium, Intakt, Punkt, Triquetrum, Intakt, Punkt, bis auf Triquetral gleichleicht, inkongruent, ohne Reizzustand, Komma, ihr ohne Bedeutung, Punkt, neue Zeile, Ezeusene luxiert, bei leicht supernierter Untersuchungsposition, Komma, kann auch bei asymptomatischen Personen gesehen werden, Komma, klinische Korrelation nötig, Komma, auf Symptome, Fragezeichen, Klammer zu, Punkt, neue Zeile, im Bereich der Schmerzmarkierung, Volar am Hypotenar, zeigt sich ein vermehrtes Coiling, der Arteria ulnaris. Punkt ergänzender Gefäßultraschall mit Frage nach Perfusion und Dissektion empfohlen. Punkt. So what I don't see is something like a thrombosis, but I think that's also quite difficult to see uh, without contrast. That's why I recommend a ultrasound. I think that's easier on ultrasound. So I don't think there is thrombosis. I don't see enough edema. There's even like a little bit of edema actually around this coiling here. So maybe there was an issue with the with this. And we can also add maybe that the so the deep ulnar nerve is fine. We don't have any denervation, and the superficial branches of the ulnar nerve are fine too. So let's put this in. Nervus ulnaris unauffällig ohne Zeichen einer Neuropathie. Punkt. Okay, so let's go to the report. Normal, normal, normal. Bisotriquetralen Gelenk ohne Reizzustand. Bisotriquetralen Rezessus. Okay. Yeah, if you have ideas what we could do during these parts, I mean, this couple of minutes I lose, uh, where you would want to watch. That would be interesting for me to learn. So type it in chat if you have an idea how to make these streams more interesting. Bisohamatum intact. Handgrenzligamente intakt. Gering supernierter Untersuchung. Trophik der Muskulatur gut. Ohne Hinweis auf. So, Umis is asking whether this could be AVN. We don't see anything in the bone that would indicate some form of AVN or something. Um, not sure. Are you or you mean like a AVM? Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, sorry. Like a venous malformation, arterial venous malformation. The problem with AVM or malformation is that this is we we don't really can put this together with a more recent injury. So that's that's the issue, right? So I'm thinking more like it's something like um, um, like what's it called in German, like in English, hypotenar hammer syndrome, kind of like area where you hit and and stuff, and then stuff breaks and get because it's kind of like over it, but more distally. I think the coiling itself can be a variant, but maybe there was just kind of like an injury to the vessel. I'm not not sure. I don't see a dissection, we have flow voids all the way through, and I'm not sure that this is actually even the problem. But this is where the pain marker is, we got some soft tissue edema, well, I could actually add this, to be honest. This flexor retinaculums. And Und im umgebenden Mächtelgewebe kleines fokales Ödem, schrägstrich Hämatom. Gefäßultraschall empfohlen. Eher ohne Bedeutung.
geschlafen. Zeigt sich ein vermehrtes. Yeah, we we could use it for questions actually, but I still have to fix everything up here. Okay. Text übertragen, Text übertragen. The trauma was also more than a, well, six weeks ago, so um, that's also an interesting time frame. Um, so we got this font, and this font size, so very specific, very specific. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. No. No. <laughs> Come on. All right. Tack. Okay. There you go. That's it. That's it. Tack. Okay. So we can do. Yeah, I think we just finish up two more cases. That's fine. So I have to do them anyways. So, klinische Angaben, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile, Muskelfaser ist Musculus semitendinosus, Rechtspunkt, Neurabsatz, Fragestellung, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile, Frage nach Ausdehnung und Hämatom, Fragezeichen, Neurabsatzbefund, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile, Okay, so this was is a muscle injury, a known muscle injury, and I just want to see the extent and everything. Unfortunately, they did not compose the images. So we can see some edema here in the hamstrings, and we have, oh, well, the knee is there, so we can go all the way. It's actually here at the level of the biceps, more so than, well, semi tendinosus as well, so we can see. Uh, if we go higher up at this location, okay. Yes, so we can see semi membranosus tendon going down, then semi tendinosus and biceps femoris. Well, it's actually more biceps, and then from there it goes straight down. So it's just a small overlap here into this. Okay, so what we do is this. And we go here, and we do this, and we do this. Good. That's not a very interesting case, um, but we have, if you go back here, tendon of the semi, well, the semi tendinosus, and it's not really there as a tendon, so this is biceps femoris. And then we have the more distally, when we go more distally, we can see that here we have biceps femoris, the long head, and then 
this would be semitendinosus. There is a little bit of edema more along the fascia here, but the primarily, and maybe there in a muscle, but the, the bulk of injury down there. But that's biceps more here, okay. Okay, good. Distally and then proximally up here, okay. So the tendon is partially torn, no hematoma. You can see it here, and you can see the normal bit on the other side. And there, there's a pain marker there. Okay. So if these bits, we just want to be accurate in our anatomic description. I mean, it's just a myotendinous injury of the biceps femoris, which forms part of the conjoint tendon. This would be, if we go back to proximally, semitendinosus, and then if we go down, is that a composed one? No. You can see how this separates biceps from semitendinosus. Then tendon, so, uh, okay. So, what I just wanna check is some anatomy stuff. And I will show you this on screen. Okay, so we wanna go here. And then we wanna see us on MRI. So, now oh, can you see that? Yes, I think you can see. Okay. Excellent, so we can use this. And uh, we can see here in this particular image, but we wanna, we don't wanna see at this level. So, I mean, we don't, we know this, but we wanna go one level further down. So we can maybe use this. And where we still have, well, conjoint tendon, they both have the same origin. And then we have the muscles. So membranosus tendon, this is just the, the other side. So we wanna see in this article. Uh, not this one. Maybe we can go here. Maybe they give some insights here in terms of oh, they don't go further down I just want to see that we don't accidentally call it the wrong names yeah so biceps femoris tendon so yeah that's what I thought so we want to use that so it's actually when we follow it down it also goes more to the biceps rather than the semitendinosus. Okay, so let's go, let's do with that. Um, yeah. Am Ursprung der Hamstrings intakte conjoint tendon und semimembranosus sehne punct ligamentum sacro sacrotuberale intakt Punkt. Kurz nach dem Ursprung zeigt sich ein Ödem um die Konjontenden Konjontenden Kommagmatum Verlauf um die Sehne des langen Kopfs des Muskels bis auf Femoris ziehend mit myotendinösen Muskelödem und irregulärer Sehnensubstanz kommen passend zu einer stattgehabten myotendinösen Verletzung, vor allem des Musculus biceps femoris caput longum. Punkt, kein Hämatom abgrenzbar, Punkt, kein kompletter Kontinuitätsunterbruch, kommen allerdings irreguläre Sehnenkontur und irreguläre Sehnensignal. Punkt. Die kraniokaudale Ausdehnung dieser Veränderungen
beträgt circa zehn Zentimeter Punkt. Die übrigen Muskelgruppen sind intakt. Punkt, Symphyse, Normalpunkt, Hüftgelenke ohne grobe Auffälligkeiten. Punkt, linker Oberschenkel, Normalpunkt. Neue Absatzbeurteilung, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile. Subakut imponierender myotendinöser Subakut imponierende myotendinöse Verletzung, vor allem im Musculus Bizeps femoris, mit Beteiligung der proximalen Conjoint Tendon. Punkt. Der Musculus Semimembran Semitendinosus selbst ist Zeigt nur ein leichtes myofasziales Ödem lateral hin in, Mitte, in der Mitte des Oberschenkels. Punkt. Neue Zeile, kein Hämatom. Punkt. Kraniokaudale Ausdehnung der Muskelveränderung etwa 10 cm, Querschnitt im Musculus biceps femoris bei nur flauem Ödem weniger als 50%. Prozent. Punkt. Das Ödem betrifft im axialen Querschnitt weniger als 50% des Muskels Bizeps femoris caput longum. So technically we could use the BAMIC classification, but I think in this case, um, and because of the referring doctor, I'm not doing it. So let's go here, just round this up, and then we can go to the last one. Um, the intact conjoint tendon on Conjoint tendon and yeah. semimembranosus sene. Just have to teach him this word. Musculus biceps femoris. Myotendinöse musculodem und Irregulärer Sehnensubst. Kein kompletter Kontinuitäts Kontinuitätsunterbruch. Verletzung vor allem im Conjoint Tendon knapp distal des Ursprungs Kraniokaudale Ausdehnung Muskulus Bizeps femoris. Okay, that's it. Text, Text übertragen. Okay, and then we can go straight to the last case, which will be a finger. And then we call it a night.
So, zack, zack, zack. Okay. Hmm. Maybe I should actually do a stream after reporting and just scroll through the cases. So I think that would be probably better. More info in less time. It's memo to myself. Okay, let's send it off. Okay, let's go straight to the last case now and then um, we can do that. So finger, interesting case, hopefully. And then we'll see. Unklare Schwellung im Mittelfinger links DIP DIP Gelenkpunkt Neuabsatz Ganglion Fragezeichen anderes Fragezeichen Neuabsatzbefund Doppelpunkt neue Zeile. So clinically there is a swelling at the distal interphalangeal joint of the third finger. So this will be oh there's even a marker. Yeah, we don't see much. Um, image quality is not great. This is in the one Tesla scanner. I'm not sure why they put this person in the one Tesla scanner. Der Befund wurde auf der Haut mittels einer Kugel markiert. Der Marker liegt über der mittleren Phalanx dick 3. Punkt im Knochen, keine Auffälligkeiten. Punkt Strecksehnen intakt. Punkt Flexorsehnen intakt. Punkt keine Raumforderung, Punkt, nach Kontrastmittelgabe, kein auffälliges Enhancement, Punkt, kein Ganglion, Punkt, keine sonstige Raumforderung, Punkt, eine Absatzbeurteilung, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile. Die Schwellung ist im MR nicht abgrenzbar. Well, if anything, it's a bit thicker here. But but it's late and I think maybe it's just a vessel and I don't want to make things worse for the patient. I think that's maybe just this. Maybe it's actually this bit. Okay, so let's go back. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm too tired. Okay. The Befund wurde auf der Haut mittels einer Kugel markiert. Der Marker liegt dorsal über der mittleren Phalanx, Tick 3, Punkt, distal über dem DIP-Gelenk, zeigt sich ein 2 mm kleiner Knoten, Komma, welcher fraglich Kontrastmittel aufnimmt, Komma, siehe Dokuserie. Sonst keine weiteren Auffälligkeiten, insbesondere Strecksehnenapparat intakt, Punkt, keine äußeren Auffälligkeiten, Punkt, kein eindeutiges Ganglion, Punkt, neuer Absatz. Beurteilung, Doppelpunkt, neue Zeile, 2 mm Struktur, Dorsal über dem DIP-Gelenk, Dick 3, Komma, wahrscheinlich Kontrastmittel aufnehmend. Es handelt sich hier nicht eindeutig um ein Gefäß, der kleines Ganglion möglich. Punkt in dieser Auflösung im offenen MRI nicht weiter zu differenzieren. Punkt ergänzender Ultraschall empfohlen. Punkt. Ja, yeah, I think that's that's really it. I don't want to say. Oh no. Kontrastmittel aufnimmt. Oh, that's wrong. Aufnimmt. Dick 3. Kontrastmittel aufnehmend. Text übertragen. 
So, okay, that's it. Okay, guys, um, I'm wrapping up this today. I uh, thank you very much for tuning in. It's late. It's uh, nearly midnight for some of you in Europe, um, and it's certainly also late for me. And I think that's it. Then I managed to go through what I wanted to do. I've got one case left, or but that's maybe for tomorrow. Uh, because that's for a different client where I'm not allowed to do this online stuff. Okay, so let's send this out. Tech. Okay, yeah, if you have any questions, then please, um, yeah, comment uh, either here in chat or I'm just sending you a link to, let's see, um, where is it? Let me go uh, to this, yeah. So I'm sending you a link in the chat where you can maybe find some more inspiration on your MSK journey. This is the, the free radiology school. I can actually sh open this up here. Let me just do this. So you can see here. Uh, yeah, go here. I'll post this in chat. Um, if I find the chat, I think it's here. Okay, chat. So, in case you uh, want to find more stuff about MSK Radiology, go here. There are a couple of lectures and stuff, so go there. Uh, it's completely free. And then if, you know, I might, if you have some feedback for me and you like this, that's good. I think the feedback so far was good. Um, I might do this maybe also 